I'm here as a representative of Tech Textile in Frankfurt, which sounds a little bit kind of boring, honestly, but it's not, I promise. And I will show you within the next 25 minutes together with my nice colleagues over here. Um, two questions at the beginning. Who of you did ever fly with an Airbus A380? Can you show me? Okay, now I tell you something really scary. More than 50% of this airplane is made by or made with technical textiles and it's flying anyway, no problem. Who of you is interested in skiing besides the effect of global warming? Who wants to ski within the next 20, 25 years, 30 years? Okay, you can maybe ski in Morocco or in Tunisia or in any hot space because there are technical textiles, it's called biogliss, and they are, make you able to ski on technical textiles. Now it's green, maybe we can do them white, but it's an innovation presented at Tech Textile last year in Frankfurt. So these are two, only two examples of how technical textiles can have a real impact on our lives. And it's not only about medical or construction or all these kind of things, no. We also have a big part when it's about fashion and clothing. So I'm very happy to um, introduce two of our exhibitors who are exhibiting in, in, in Frankfurt. Um, we will start firstly with um, Dr. Jan Zimmermann from the Swiss -based Switzerland based company Fosterone. Um, he will tell you some very interesting insights when it comes to development and production of um, textiles and the new ideas of how to handle and produce textiles. Followed by Philip Schwarz from Variable Life Science with the brand Antilope. And Antilope, or Philip, will tell you something about how to do a market launch about that. And all of these examples and many, many more you will be able to see next year in May in Frankfurt for Tech Textile. You're all welcome to visit us there. Frankfurt is not as bad as everybody says. It's a nice city. I live there. I'm not originally from there, so trust me, it's fine. And now I want to hand over to Jan Zimmermann. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much for this kind introduction. Thanks for having me here. Thanks for being here, all of you. Um, I will give you just a brief overview, sorry, of uh, what we do as a traditional textile manufacturer in the field of innovative fabrics, um, especially in the field of e-textiles. Um, first of all, to kind of set the scope. What are we talking about? You know, there's a lot of um, phrases being thrown around uh, latest trends and, and what's hot and what's not. Um, there's the whole field of wearable technology and there's the whole field of smart fabrics and intelligent textiles. Uh, to me, personally, um, a wristwatch is already a wearable. Uh, wearables today is all about making electronics small enough that you can wear it around your wrist or around your, um, your neck. Um, it's all about focusing on the electronic part of things. Uh, on the other hand, you have the smart fabrics, intelligent textiles, fabrics that are breathable, that are stain and water repellent, uh, so on and so forth. Um, the field that we're working on is at the intersect of smart fabrics and wearable technology, where it's really about integrating electronic functionality directly into textiles. Um, why do we not see um, a lot of e-textiles in the market space out there already. Uh, you can go back 200 years and you already have e um, examples of, of, of e-textiles. I'll come to that later. Um, the big issue is that you're trying to combine two industries that could not be more separate from each other in the way they develop, in the way they work, in the way uh, the markets work. Electronics is all about making um, a very anisotropic very small components and pieces, trying to get as much structure into a small space as possible. Whereas textiles is all about making large areas that are isotropic, that are as homogeneous as you can possibly make them. And now you're trying to combine uh, these two things and uh, you can look back to the last 30, 40 or even 50 years and you see a lot of projects fail uh, because typically um, the challenge of merging these two uh, technologies is underestimated, highly underestimated. Um, it will be very interesting for me and uh, personally and for us as a company to see how um, the attempts of, of the Googles and Amazons who all come from the electronic side uh, will actually 
meet the challenges that face them um, on the textile side in the, in the next years. Um, but if you manage to merge these two um, industries, you can make really interesting new products. You can make very beautiful new products, like this sparkling corsage um, with LEDs that simply offers a new expression or a new way um, of, uh, how do you say, verführen in English? Seduce. Huh? Seduce, thank you, a new way of seduction. Um, or you can make functional products, as Philip's, Philip will tell you more about, um, electro-stimulating suits that you can wear during workout um, that help, simply help you become fitter, better, stronger, uh, much faster than uh, when you go uh, into a, a, a normal gym. But Philips will talk a lot uh, about this after me. Now, who are we getting involved uh, in, in e-textiles? Uh, I represent the company Forster Rona. Forster Rona is a traditional textile company, has a more than 110 years history in developing, producing beautiful fabrics for the fashion industry. So we've been supplying the Louis Vuittons, Chanel's and Dior's uh, of this world more or less ever since they were founded. Um, we still do this today very successfully, um, but in the last couple of years we've started thinking about, well, we have this production infrastructure, we can create these amazing beautiful fabrics, um, is there anything else we can produce with our know-how and our machinery? And then we turn to technical textiles, technical fabrics, specifically electronics um, and fabrics. It's taken us a while to build a portfolio of actually offering something to the market. Um, today, what we offer to the market space of e-textiles is industrial production processes, materials know-how, and interconnection technology. So we want to be the ones that people who are not the makers you know, turn to when they say, I want to make an e-textile product. And uh, we want to be the ones that solve all the manufacturing, um, production and technology issues for them and be the ones in the end who produce these amazing uh, new textiles. Um, we do this in the fashion space, we do this in the industrial space, we do this in the medical space. It's all about taking unusual materials, processing them on industrial production machines to create textiles that have a sensing function, an actuating function, uh, whether it's pressure sensors, ECG sensors, EEG sensors, um, or whether it's lighting. And as we are at a um, fashion um, type of conference, I'll go more into the fashion side of, of what we do. Um, I'll talk a little bit about textile lighting. So if you go down to the exp exhibition, you will see a lot of um, dresses, uh, jackets, clothes that are somehow lit up. Um, if you go to the internet, you will see thousands and ten thousands of other examples of what could be done, what kind of amazing products could be made uh, by using uh, illuminated textiles. And then you can go back to 1990. Uh, 1989 and you will already see dresses with light bulbs. Huh? Yes, it's a nice story. I will take maybe uh, 30, 30 seconds to explain this. Um, these were animation ladies that were rented out by a company called the Electric Girl Lighting Company. You know, if you had, a, uh, if you had an event at your house, you could, you could uh, rent this lady to be a little spectacle. Uh, this company actually sold these ladies also, right? So, different times. And, and their marketing claim was, um, if you have one of these ladies in your house, you save a butler and you save um, a doorman. Yeah? Because she can open the door, um, welcome your guests, and she will take the light with her to wherever you want to meet your guests, so you don't need the butler to light the candles everywhere. Um, I assume she had a very big uh, lead type of battery somewhere <laughs> under, <laughs> underneath, underneath her dress. Uh, so, so this idea of integrating lights into clothing you know, is, is not something that's new. It's not 10 years old, 20 years old, you know, it's almost 200 years old. Well, 200. 
Um, and the question is now, why do we see so many prototypes and so little products? I say it's not because text, uh, uh, the, the fashion industry is not interested in bling bling, right? You have a lot of bling bling. Um, it's simply because the technical difficulties um, surrounding even a simple technology like LEDs in a textile context um, is, is, is quite a challenge, uh, which we had to experience ourselves also. Um, so this is what illuminated fabrics or illuminated clothing looks like today. You see these amazing products by amazing, really brilliant people who devise uh, these concepts and, and build these prototypes. Um, but when you look underneath the cover, it's all more or less conventional technology somehow applied to a layer and then hidden with a layer of organza. Huh? Um, so it's, you can call it wearable. The question is, you know, how many of you people would actually wear this? Um, so we started in 2011, um, also very naive, as, as uh, a lot of others, uh, I guess, do, by thinking LED technology, you know, it's very simple from a technical standpoint, can't be that difficult. It'll take us three, three months to develop a technology and then we're market ready and let's go. Uh, in essence, then, uh, it turned out that it took us three years to develop a technology and it took um, a, a, a change in, in our mindset um, in the way we worked, because first we started working on prototypes. Huh? We started working on product ideas, like this dress, the climate dress that kind of went around the world uh, media-wise. Um, but then, at some point, we discovered that by thinking prototypes all the time, we focused too much on the application aspect. We focused too much, too much on timelines. We focused too much on getting this thing ready and working to take pictures, to take a video, uh, to do all the marketing stuff um, without really focusing on the quality, on the manufacturability and all of that. So after, after trying unsuccessfully to make five copies of this first dress for more than a year, we said, okay, we need a clean slate and we need to, th we need to start thinking technology, production technology, and not prototypes. And the prototypes are then only a means to an end to kind of prove that our technology is working. Um, and that's what we did in the following years. And uh, in 2013, we were able to introduce the first product in the market uh, with our LED technology. And we kind of got our, earned our laurels in, in 2014 when Albert Kriemler from Akris, the creative director, um, came to us one morning and said, listen, um, in four weeks I have my 10-year anniversary at the Paris Fashion Week. Um, I would like to show one showpiece, you know, like as a highlight at the end of my defile uh, with an LED dress. Can you do that for me? And we said, well, four weeks. Um, it's two weeks longer than we usually have when we create just normal fabrics. Um, but um, yeah, let's try. And in the end, within the four weeks, we were able to develop and prototype 10 products for Acris, of which six went on the runway and six went on into sales. Um, and that was for us the proof that our technology is actually uh, ready and, and uh, market ready. So we are now able to work within the timelines that the fashion industry is used to work um, and, and integrate uh, technology. Um, I'll just show you a few well, no, this is what we call what we do. We call it embroidery. Um, it's a new dimension in textile design. Uh, it has a textile look and feel. You're welcome to visit us at the Tech Textile booth uh, downstairs. It's uh, made with industrial production processes, and especially, it's extremely robust. You can put our fabrics, if the fabric, the base fabric, survives a washing machine, our technology survives a washing machine. You can wash this 40 times at 60 degrees in a household washing machine uh, without having to worry about anything. You can drive your car over it. We've, we put this in fencing vests, we put this in carpets, we put this in car seats, um, and we haven't had a single failure due to mechanical stresses um, yet. Um, so, a few examples. So, this is the line of, of, um, of, of pieces that we made for Acris. We made a few evening dresses um, and, and gowns and some accessories like handbags um, and stuff, uh, which were very successful and also um, in the market space. Um, of course, this is uh, 
haute, haute couture bordering uh, on the, on the Pret-à-Porter. Um, uh, product that will be out in fall uh, is a piece of uh, ski wear for Bogner. Um, that you can see downstairs and have a look at. Um, please also, whatever you see downstairs, uh, feel free to touch, feel free to cuddle. Uh, you don't need to worry about breaking anything. Um, but uh, besides the fashion space, you know, we, we do uh, kind of fun stuff, uh, like uh, the second version of the T-shirt OS, where we supplied uh, a textile LED screen with 1,000 individually addressable LEDs. Um, this is also washable, um, maybe not at 60 degrees, but uh, maybe delicate cycle and hand wash. Um, we created a, a line of interior decoration fabrics for Kreation Baumann. Uh, we created um, uh, bed sheets uh, for, for Schlossberg. Um, you already see, yeah, we are the ones that enable brands whether they're from fashion, from the interior design space, um, to work with this technology. That's, that's what we uh, want to be. And then besides the whole um, decorative aspects of LEDs, um, that is, uh, is in my eyes undisputed, uh, we can of course work with the lighting technology in a more technical sense. Uh, this is a very beautiful um, project um, that we've made. I'll just run this again, yeah, so it's not about fashion, it's not about uh, uh, this beautiful lady, it's about putting this beautiful lady in the perfect light huh? um, with um, a textile spotlight that fulfills all requirements that you have uh, in regards to um, professional lighting equipment, but it's foldable, it's crunchable, it's washable, it can fall down without breaking, you can walk over it, you can drive a car over it. Um, <laughs> and it will still work. Um, so coming from a purely decorative standpoint as a fashion company with the LEDs, our first thoughts, of course, were fashion oriented. Um, all of a sudden, people were inspired to think more technical applications. Um, this is also why the fair tech textile is so important for us uh, because our job is to show the world what can be done with textiles nowadays and then we need, we need to try to reach as many people as possible to be inspired by what we can do to create um, their own products and world with it. Um, so these were a couple of examples of how e-textiles enable new products and I thank you for your attention and now you will see another very, very interesting project and, and product that can be made with e-textiles. Then Jan told you that it's really robust. It's true. We shared a stall at the last Tech Textile. And on the very first day, they had this showpiece with all these beautiful LEDs. And in the very first minutes, I dropped a whole pot of coffee on that and was <laughs> petrified. But his employees were really cool. They are no problem. We wash it. It's, uh, and they were true. So that uh, worked beautifully. Now to Antelope. In uh, not four weeks, but four years, I will tell you the story in the next uh, eight minutes. Four years ago, I learned by chance about a swimming race in Zurich, the Lake Zurich Swim Marathon, taking place from Rappersville to Zurich. It's 26 Ks, non-stop swimming. Of course, I was intrigued and wanted to try. I had three months to prepare. I uh, did this and after 10 kilometers, I could not swim anymore and failed. I was almost drowning. They took me out of the race. Um, my friend Kai was not prepared to accept that limit. So one year later, as they approached me and said I had a chance to try again, he was uh, setting me up with a special training program. So I did two times a week of swimming and one time a week of special electromuscle stimulation training in one of his studios, he worked on my weak points, and I finished the race. 12 hours of non-stop swimming, as not being a good swimmer, we were um, really in wonder of what our bodies are capable of doing. So that was really the nucleus of founding Antelope. We had a look at all the products in the market, 
They were all studio-based, and all right, that's, maybe that's not it. Let's look at fashion tech, at uh, what we can do to integrate stuff into sportswear, to make it close to the body, to integrate it into sports. We believe that it's an easy, fast-forward approach, probably the same mistake uh, Jan was making. A couple of months later, thought we had the ready product. We, of course, did not. We had a working prototype that showed us we are going in the right direction, but it was not uh, yet something we could mass produce. So we had showcases for fairs for our potential customers, for investors. They were trying this on. It really worked fantastic. So you had, for the first time, the chance to enhance your workout in a way you could never do before. So the idea is really to accept not the limits that you have while time restriction or your workout capabilities, but with our technology, the ultimate goal is that you put it on as a sportswear, and whatever kind of sport you do, you do, but it will be a lot more effective, because all muscles will be stimulated as you would when you work out with 100% motivation. You reach the last single muscle cell. That um, really works fantastic. What we did to prove that there is a market. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, crowdfunding. Very good. So not crowdfinancing, crowdfunding. We did a uh, crowdfunding campaign last year. That was the most successful crowdfunding campaign out of Germany on Indiegogo. We uh, sold uh, way beyond one million US dollars. That is when we learned that it was a success from uh, our team, at that time consisting of a lot of textile engineers to help us integrate everything into the textile. On that success, I, of course, want to show you the product. That's what it is, where you see the honeycomb structures. That is where the electrodes are. And on shows like Tech Textile and a lot of different trade shows, we visited to get to know that kind of market. We knew the sport market. We love to do sports, of course. But we were no experts, neither in electronics nor technical textiles, uh, nor programming. We got the right people on board who helped us. For example, Jan in uh, stitching technology, how to integrate something that conducts the electricity into your body. And uh, that's the product we came up with. It's, uh, you can watch it, try it, feel it again on the same stall as uh, Foster Rona from uh, Messe Frankfurt downstairs. There's one guy where you can see what you can achieve if you train every muscle in the right way. Um, it is not working. So this is really about bringing sport into your daily life, so out of the studio into sports. So you can really create your own hills. We could, uh, in Berlin, you could cycle along the spray and it would feel like cycling in the Alps. Because with our program, you can increase resistance through your own muscles. It's uh, not only a product for lifestyle, for reducing back pain or uh, feeling well, but also for Olympic athletes. That is Marcel Hacker on his way to his fourth, uh, fifth Olympic Games, four he already did. He just uh, won the second place in the European Championships, training with antelope. So this is really about enhancing what you do anyway and give you that extra push or boost, either for yourself, against the competition, for the sport you love doing, And this year, we will go the next step from crowdfunding, so being public, being orderable. Um, as we speak, we are putting together the packages of the first deliveries we will, uh, deliveries we will do. Um, the official launch will take place this year, parallel to the Olympic Games in Rio. We will launch our web shop, our whole series of products, which either consist out of the full suit, as you see on Marcel, or on products that target specific muscle groups, like if you only want to have a six pack, we have the right product. If you just uh, want to get rid of back pain, 
we again have the right product. Or if you on the more niche market, if you always wondered how to get rid of neck pain while being in the arrow position, we have the right product. Um, the product we love most, which we can show you downstairs as well, are calf guards. Um, EMS has been titled as the new magnesium, so this will reduce the tendency to cramp either on while you sleep or on long distance flights. It's thrombose prophylax, so you will get a massage out of your own muscles. That's um, everything. What we do is within yourself. We can't add anything. We just amplify what is in our bodies anyway. So this is really about not accepting the limits that we think that are, but a limit is not a limit that it appears to be. So use the power and maximize yourself. Thank you.